again, are we are we ever going to see rates go from, you know, say closer to the sevens down to the twos again? Because interest rates in the twos and threes is not a sign of a healthy economy. And it's not a sign of a healthy market, right? Uh, as the Fed can continue to stem off inflation a little bit and, and, and keep that going in the right direction and not make some of the prior mistakes that they may have made. Well, only last thing I could say, and I say this to everyone is, you know, don't ever make decisions because of, of a number, because of a rate, right? You know, make decisions based on what you're, what's right for your family and what's right for you. We are in September 2024 and we are a week out from an announcement that I want to say a lot of people absolutely in the real estate industry and the mortgage industry have been waiting on for some time. We have a Fed report coming out next week and we are anticipating a rate drop and that is excellent news. Uh, for the market, for those who have been watching interest rates closely, kind of navigating that, do I buy, do I hold, do I wait, do I go ahead and take advantage of something now? That We're going to dive into that with uh, one of my lending partners once again, uh, who has been on the podcast before. All right. So stay tuned and dive into this discussion that is most relevant right now. Uh, for those who are still possibly considering making a purchase this year. Let's hop into it now. Welcome to New Jersey Living, the podcast where we explore all things New Jersey real estate. I'm your host, Corey Jones, a real estate agent with Coldwell Banker and the team leader of the New Jersey Living Group. We're a team of experienced agents who specialize in residential sales in several counties ranging from Bergen County in northern New Jersey to Ocean County down the shore. On this podcast, we will talk to real estate experts, local business owners, community leaders, and town officials to get the inside scoop various towns in New Jersey. We'll discuss everything from the latest market trends to featured local attractions with dining, recreation, and entertainment. Whether you are a current resident, a prospective buyer, or just curious about New Jersey real estate, we have something for you. So sit back, relax, and join us for a conversation about all things New Jersey Living. All right, welcome to New Jersey Living, the podcast. Want to thank everyone for tuning in once again. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and click like, subscribe, notification bell, stay updated on these episodes that are broadcast on YouTube, as well as your favorite podcast source. All right, so uh, today I am really excited to bring back my partner, lending partner, Kevin Handerhan of My Mutual. So Kevin is going to dive in. We're going to dive into some conversation about what's going on. What are some of the recent trends? And I'm, I'm going to really lean in uh, to, to Kevin. I'm going to lean in you first just to give us some context here historically, like where we came from going back to that COVID time frame really until now. Uh, where we came from, how it was historic significance then compared to where we are now. Yeah, sure. Well, let's go back then to when the Fed started raising interest rates. That was in the beginning of 2022. So Q1 of 2022, the Fed funds rate uh, was still as, as close to zero as it could be. It was in between 0% to 0.25%, which is pretty much the lowest it's been. Uh, since 2022 to present, there's been 11 rate hikes in total by the Fed, of which starting in Q1 of 2022, there was seven alone in 2022 and four in 2023. Okay. So what most people don't realize is that the Fed actually hasn't increased their, their Fed funds rate uh, since July 26th of last year. So the last Fed meeting where they increased the Fed funds rate was it's actually over, a year, over, a, over yeah. a year ago. Yeah, over a year ago. So where we saw all of that, you know, the, the you know, Fed increasing rates and all that traction happening, you know, negative traction happening was between Q1 of 2022 through to, you know, middle of, of, of last year. Uh, so we actually haven't seen the Fed increase you know, since over a year now. OK, but we also haven't seen, you know, much, uh, you know, positive improvement in rates in that time frame. Right. You know, so, you know, so now it's finally it's one of those things where it's exciting because, uh, you know, for the past two years, two and a half years, it's a everybody's been thinking, when's the time going to come? When's the time going to come? You know, uh, when it, when is uh, when is Powell going to uh, stop making the hawkish comments and, you know, 
actually, uh, you know, make some comments that, you know, trend towards that they feel that they are leveling off inflation and getting towards that, you know, that, that you know, target 2% uh, to cool it off, you know. So finally, last, uh, last meeting in August, uh, last month, uh, Jerome Powell was very clear on that. You know that uh, that they are there, and that we we should expect a you know uh, a, a rate decrease moving forward. So, you know what happens when when that happens. So, one thing that people don't I think really realize is that trends to the interest rates you know have already happened in the past month. Okay, so yes, we're going to see the Fed you know uh, lower the Fed funds rate you know, next week. Okay, right. and it's most likely going to be by twenty-five basis points. That's ninety-nine percent, quarter yes. quarter percent. Right? It, was, it was hopeful so, at one point that it'd be a half, but that's yeah. It, I'm, it was I'm hopeful kinda, it would be a half, gonna... but it's look, it's it's not. Yes. You know, everything's pointing towards twenty-five basis points. So hey, it's something, yes. something, right? You know. Yes. So we know that that's happening. We've known that that's kind of happening now for you know uh, really a few weeks. So uh, what's happened? is uh, the mortgage market has already reacted to that. So yes. what most people don't realize is once once we see that there's a very good chance, when I say we, the mortgage market in general, once once we see there's a very good chance that the Fed is going to, you know, uh, uh, you know, lower the, the Fed's the, 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 the rate, you know, from there, you know, the market reacts very quickly, especially in times like this where rates have have just been trending upwards. And we, you know, we've all been dying for some more affordability and some lower interest rates Definitely. you know so the market the mortgage market has already reacted to the you know the fed funds rate uh, being lowered you know before it even happened right so it hasn't even happened yet it's happening next week but the market has already reacted to it so what does that mean it means that when the fed you know meets next week they are going to cut okay but it most likely won't change interest rates significantly for at least a certain period of time okay what it will do when when they meet next week is it will directly automatically correspond uh, in lower rates on any short term money okay that people are applying for so personal loans credit cards installment yeah. loans credit cards right because that is what the fed funds rate really truly dictates short term money okay right. so when we see that you know that the, the fed meet next week and lower by 25 basis points what does that mean it means if you're applying for any type of short term loan don't do it right now wait wait and wait a couple of weeks in a couple of weeks you're probably getting an interest rate that's a quarter percent better on short term money specifically so when we talk about long term money though mortgages loans paid over 30 year terms loans paid you know over terms more than 10 years uh so again what we've we've already seen the movement there we've already seen you know the interest rates be affected positively okay over the course of the past few weeks since the comments were made since the last fed meeting in august so you know what we've actually seen to give you kind of uh, you know some perspective there the beginning of this year, Q1 2024, the average 30-year fixed interest rate nationwide. You know, obviously we had some in Q1, we had some times where interest rates were all the way in the you know mid to high sevens, even right. even you know eights, and they've been they've been all over the place. But from an average standpoint, in Q1 of 2024, uh, the average 30-year fixed rate was a little over 6.7%. So Q1, we were at about 6.7% from an average. Q2, we saw a huge increase. So Q2, interest rates went up by over a half a percent on average. So in Q2 of this year, the average 30-year fixed interest rate was just under 7.2% on average. So, I mean, it was a little crazy. We, we saw interest rates in, in, you know, in January and February at, you know, 6.5 to 6.7. And all of a sudden in March, April, May, you know, those rates were in the mid to high sevens, if that makes sense. Right. right. So we saw huge fluctuations there you know, in Q1 and Q2 of this year, uh, you know, and then Q3, you know, uh, as as we've been you know approaching spring, you know, obviously spring and summer markets, we've seen, seen a little bit more volume, uh, a little bit more inventory, which always helps. OK, uh, so in Q3, the average 30 year fixed rate came back down 
from again 7.2 ish roundabout in Q2 of this year, you know, to roughly about little, you know, in between 6.6 to 6.7 in Q3. So basically, rates, if you look at it, have been somewhat level if you think about it, right? Over the course of the year, we started, you know, in the you know mid to higher sixes. We popped up to the you know lower to mid sevens, and now we're kind of right back in the mid sixes again. Okay, right. so all of this is good signs because it shows a little bit more consistency in our market, right? Which is what we need. Right. You know? So again, you know the thing of the, what we all need to understand is that rates have come down already in the past month ballpark by about thirty to forty basis points. So interest rates are already about a quarter percent you know, to three eighths percent better in the rate than they were two, three months ago. Right. Okay. And that all that traction has really happened in the past month. Okay. Since the last Fed meeting, when it was so clear, you know, that that markets were, were going that they were going to lower the Fed funds rate, you know, which again, you know, had markets react positively. Okay. Right. So again, from an expectation of, you know, wh where, where do we expect to be moving forward? Well, we know what the Fed's going to do, you know, next week. We know that, okay. As far as when does that, you know, change our our mortgage rates positively? Ballpark idea, couple couple of months, most likely. Okay, the expectation is that by sometime, hopefully Q one of twenty five. Okay, we see rates in the high fives. We see an average thirty year fixed rates in the high fives. That's I'm an optimist, as you know, Core. Right, <laughs> so that's being a little optimistic because there's other other uh, you know data that points to that interest rates may not hit the fives until maybe even through the end of 2025. Some of that has to do with potential policies with you know changing leadership uh, and things along that. So it's it's kind of up in the air, right? But the good news is that we're not expecting to see interest rates go here moving forward, right? right. We're seeing right. them here, right, and then slowly going this way, right, right. Which is, which is a great sign because it's it's literally been at this point for two and a half years since we've you know had this type of feeling. So, yeah, and I think it's important to keep in mind just historic perspective that we're we're in historically still a relative low rate environment, because I remember when I first came into the business of real estate, and this is going back to mid nineties and how, if you were, you know, you had a really good rate, if you were below eight and a half, you know, and mm -hmm. that was, yep. you know, of course we're, we're going back to, you know, 20 some years now. And before that, you know, as I'm a kid, not even thinking about what interest rates are right in the eighties, you know, we're talking double digit, right. At one point. Yep. So, um, you know, historically 1981, we, 1981 yeah. was the highest they ever were. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we're still historically relatively low and we came off of such a historically low uh, point when we were right in that, you know, early 2020s COVID time frame when, you know, people were like just jumping all over the, the two and a half to threes. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, which was not going to last forever. All right. So yep. um, here we are. And the question becomes people who are trying to determine their plan, their uh, activity in terms of pursuing a home or considering selling because they know what they're walking into in terms of I'm a sell, but now I need to buy on the other side. Affordability factor is certainly something that you and I've talked about and how even at, you know, say if, if we gravitate down, we're, we're talking about maybe 30, 40 basis points over the past, you know, month or so. And, um, you know, potentially from that point until early year, that could be 50 basis points from, say, August until January of next year. Um, sure. Just give people an idea affordability wise what that does for someone who is pre-approved. Um, and just looking for like, you know, just a typical in Jersey, that middle of the road is somewhere about four or five hundred thousand, you know, maybe yeah. even up towards six. Yeah. I mean, we're like peas and carrots because you say 500 i already had 500 in my mind yeah so kind of give you an idea there so q2 let's go back to q2 of this year okay with so q2 of this year if you applied for a mortgage say you know april may somewhere in that ballpark and you applied for a, a five hundred thousand uh, dollar mortgage your mortgage payment would probably be falling somewhere about principal and interest 30 year fixed about 3400 per month 
Okay. So, and that's again in that call it 7.2, 7.3 range, uh, you know, on an interest rate. Uh, so as far as what does that do for you now, uh, you know, with current interest rates being in the ballpark of about six and a half ballpark, right? So interest rates being roughly about three quarters less, right, in a percentage than they were, say, you know, April, May, say Q2, uh, you know, that essentially changes the mortgage payment by about two to $225 a month, right. okay? So someone who might have, you know, uh, been looking to take a mortgage, you know, been pre-qualified a few months back, okay, uh, for a $500,000 mortgage, you know, now has another probably 200 to you know, $225 of additional room that they can qualify for, you right. know, for a mortgage payment, right? So if they qualified for a $3,400 mortgage payment at $500,000 loan amount, you know, four or five months ago, you know, then right now that's most likely somewhere between forty to fifty thousand dollars more right. than it was. It's significant because we got to remember that you know, it, we haven't usually when we see rate drops, core in, in my twenty-one years in the business. Usually when we see rate fluctuations, it's not like this. It's not like it has been in the past couple of years, right? Right. You know, where again we go back to twenty twenty-two negatively we saw interest rates literally go from the, the twos and the threes to the sevens yes in one year right right so again being the forever optimist you know why can't we see that ever come back positively again right you know what i mean it's got to start somewhere you know and it's starting now so again are we are we ever going to see rates go from you know say closer to the sevens down to the twos again no no probably not. that's not going to happen yeah no no yeah. you know and and honestly I hope it doesn't because interest rates in the twos and threes is not a sign of a healthy economy and it's not a sign of a healthy market. Right. Yeah. So not sustainable, not sustainable, not sustainable. Not a, and, and the exciting thing is, and as long as I've been in, I've been in this business, as you know, since uh, 2004. Okay. I'm sorry. So, you know, as far as what I've seen here, you know, close to 21 years in the business, you know, I'd say the average 30 year fixed rate over the course of my 21 years that I've, I've, you know, given my average customer over 20 years is probably hovering somewhere in the high fives, right? Got it. You know, yeah. Because if you think about where rates were in, you know, 20 in 2004 compared to when where they went in 2008 with the bubble and then compared to where they, you know, I mean, so rates have ranged from the, you know, best case scenario, the twos to worst case scenario, the eights over the last 20 years. Right. So where, where, right. where have we in the past two decades, where have we found a, you know, happy medium? In the fives, in the fives, right, 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 right. So fives is healthy, healthy, healthy interest rates. So you know the the the, the exciting stuff is I you know I believe that we will see the fives. I I and I'll see, I do believe that we'll see it next year. Uh, and once we do, again, that's a very healthy market, you know. And as long as uh, you know, uh, as the Fed can continue to stem off inflation a little bit and, and and keep that going in the right direction and not make some of the prior mistakes that they may have made, right, right, you know. It puts us on a path where we can be sustainable with this moving forward, right? Yeah, you know? yeah. So the stability piece is is significantly important, right? That we don't see these high fluctuations, and I, I don't think from an economy standpoint, you know, that volatility it doesn't help, you know, in many areas at all, right? You know, if you're a day trader on Wall Street, maybe, all right. But yeah. in terms of sure. general economy, not not too great. So from a Consumer standpoint, we're looking at the market and market activity right now. We are mid-September. We've had the typical seasonal slowdown. And as we get out of July into August, all right, so you have um, our peak season in real estate, as many people well know and familiar with. Once we get into late March and into the spring, April, May, June is like that high time. That's that is the high tide in the business. All right. So people are moving. They want to move in the summer. A lot of activity. They want kids in school in the fall. Uh, once we get late summer, most of that business is done. I still have some clients that are hammering away, still trying to find deals because the reality, Kev, as you know, and a lot of deals that we work together, we are still competing. All right. Yeah. Heavily competing yep. to win deals even though there's not this um, extremely high volume of buyers that are out there compared to what we saw three, four years ago. But sure. those that are in the market and are active are aware that they have to aggressively pursue a property because the inventory is still low. 
So now yeah. we're getting into our little bit of a, again, seasonally, a little bit of a bump up that we do experience when we hit September, October, you know, to a degree, even early November before the holiday season kicks in. Um, yep. So what I'm anticipating is with if we're still trending down a little bit, right? So we, yep. if we already have trended down since late summer and we're going to trend down a little bit more, I would um, expect to see a little bit more re-engagement and activity on the buy side, which would be no great revelation. I'm not saying anything that's super <laughs> profound here. What sure. I was still unknown is when do we start to see more sellers who are holding off that move because of uncertainty, right? Because of uh, the angst over having to be back in that buyer market, right? Um, yeah. Because it's such it's so heavily slanted right now still to the side of the seller. So yep. once we are at a place, and that's where I think that stability factor becomes significant and important, when more homeowners see that there's stability and there's not going to be any extreme fluctuation and change, they yep. may have that mindset, okay, you know what, we at least see where we're landing. We see what's under our feet right now. I'm yep. more comfortable making that move and knowing, all right, we have a familiar landscape, right? Yeah. So that's that's the question mark that we don't have the answer to as to when that is going to happen. But if we see that stability and 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 early next year, I think we'll start to hopefully see more of what has been historically the trend of as we get into the new year, we see a steadily uptick of listing inventory from yep. late February, March, April. So that 2025 uh, time frame from me on the real estate side of things, this is going to be really significant to see what is changing. Is Are we getting back to what has been the typical trend that we have not seen as much of in the past few years? Yeah. Well, you know what a key to that is? And like you said before, is consistency, right? Where we're not seeing things happen like ha what happened in Q2 of this year, okay? Or what happened throughout 2022, where it just whoosh, down. Right. Yeah. People, it's no one likes that. No one likes that. Right. No one feels comfortable with that in general. But the other thing to remember, too, is that there's a lot of people out there right now who, you know, still have interest rates that are in the threes, yeah. fours. Right. But what we have to understand, though, people think, well, you know, everybody's got the rates were too low. No one's ever going to sell their house again. It's rates are rates. That's what we pay things back on. It is what it is. But that doesn't change people's circumstances. People still need to sell their houses and buy Correct. new houses, right? right? You know, I mean, that's life circumstance. People people still going to retire. Pe They're still going to relocate. Gonna retire. They're going to have more kids. Job They're gonna relocation. Go to yes. Price, you know, yes. different school systems. They want, you know, they need yes. more, more, more room for their, for, you know, more room, less room, downsizing, upside. People right. are always going to need to sell or buy real estate. You know, where it gets more difficult, of course, is when interest rates are in the sixes and sevens and not really palatable. Right. Yeah. So I think one of the keys is and that's why going back to getting some consistency, even if it's at five point nine for two, three months, a quarter in a row where we're seeing interest rates consistently between five point nine to maybe even six point one low six high fives. Right. Right. We see that consistently. It's again, something with the five in front of it is a lot more palatable for someone with a three point six percent rate than something with a six in front of it. Yes. Right. Yeah. You know, so you got a lot of people, I think right now too, that, Hey, you know what? We know we want to we sell eventually, right? We know we're, we're outgrowing the house. We've been in the house since 2020, 2021, right. We're outgrowing it. The average person, as you know, sells their home or does some, some type of transaction on their mortgage within, you know, three, four years of taking it. Right. right. So we've got a, you know, a lot of people sitting on mortgages still, right. You know, uh, but who want to buy uh, uh, new and want to sell. Right. And I think it really comes down to just getting a little bit more consistency, you know, and again, if we can get into that high five range, mm. you know, hopefully earlier next year in the Q1, Q2s of next year, that's going to be very helpful for the spring and summer markets of 2025. Yes, absolutely. And I, you know, and I, I really can't complain because my team has done well. I mean, we have, if anything, we have grown over this time frame. I, I certainly, can appreciate those in the business who have felt the pinch. Cause I was talking to my broker recently uh, and just talking about the drawback of inventory this year, we're talking 40% 40 
fewer yeah. units. Can you believe that? Forty sure. percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's a lot of people in the business who have uh, you know, felt that pinch. And again, I've been on the other side of that in growing over the same time frame. But uh when we see again that stability, I think we certainly see more of a return, right? We see a bit of a uptick of that not not a forty percent decrease, but uh, at least some kind of steadily trending upwards of people who are actually coming to market. All right, uh, sure. to have an opportunity, and and for buyers too, because you and I have some clients right now that you know we know that as well positioned their profile is, it is difficult. You know, yeah. it is difficult to get a deal Absolutely. even with a, a well positioned, and that's because of inventory. Flat out. Yeah, inventory. it's because of inventory. And it's it's also because some some folks are more inclined to be a little more aggressive than others. Yes. You know? Uh, yes. Yeah. And and that just is what it is. Yes. <laughs> Everybody has a different threshold, right? As to mm-hmm. how uh, how they can stomach the, the hard swings if they know they have to swing hard to get that property. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. A very, very fair point. So. So, yeah, uh, we, look, we're going to continue these conversations. Kevin and I are going to. Um, uh, at the very least, our target is going to be visiting quarterly so we can talk what's happening on the mortgage side quarterly moving forward. Because, Kev, this has been, man, it was, it was um, when the last time you've been on, man. That's not going to think back. It's been. Take, take, take a look. The last time I was on, I had a beard out there. Uh, so it was last year. <laughs> last it was year, last right? year, buddy. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> absolutely. It's been a year. So we're going to follow up with these quarterly moving forward so we can have like quarterly check ins as to what the market activity is looking like. Get an idea. We don't have crystal balls, but we can uh, absolutely kind of talk about where where things seem to be trending. All right. And how that overlaps with uh, the real estate market activity itself. So, uh, Kev, thanks for coming on this share a little bit too. how people can get a hold of you. Oh, yeah, sure. So, well, you know, I, I'm available at, you know, at all times, 24 seven. Right. Uh, Corey, you could share my my, my contact information. You flash up uh, your I, f- information feel, right here. We're going to flash it up right now. Absolutely. Feel feel free to give me uh, text me, call me anytime you need me. Any questions you have? I mean, what I look to do is just be uh, the best resource I can be for you on the mortgage end. So whether you have questions, whether you, you know, you're serious about doing something right now or just kind of, you know, getting your feet wet, whatever it is, you know, however I could be a resource. Uh, you know, circle you back with Corey and just make sure we give you all the right results that, you know, to put you in the right position, whether it's now, whether it's six months from now, you know, whatever it may be. The only last thing I could say, and I say this to everyone is, you know, don't ever make decisions because of, of a number, because of a rate, right? You know, make decisions based on what you're, what's right for your family and what's right for you, right? And that's not always going to, you know, markets are not always going to going to go in line with that. Right. You know, uh, and the one thing to understand is that we've still continually core, you know, this better than anyone. We, we have seen consistent market growth for nothing but, you know, deck for over a decade now. You know, so to keep again, the people who bought houses last year, right, you know, at an interest rate in the sixes or sevens, their house is worth five, four, five, six, seven percent more right now. Than it was when they purchased it last year. They've made a lot of money in equity on the house. That's a right? very so, safe. Uh, that's a very safe number as well, Sally. Because some estate, are ten and eleven. Yes. Yeah, and real estate's a, exactly. I'm being conservative, and real estate is a long term investment. We we go back to this is a long term. It's long term money. It's long term investment, right? You know. So what's happening right now compared to what's going to happen in two months, right? Is not. It's it's moot when it comes to the potential investment that you can make for your family, you know, and obviously having you know the right home for your yourself as well is the case. So you know, don't make decisions based on the numbers. We're here to help you and make sure that, that it's right for you. Just reach out to us. Absolutely. All right. Well, Kev, thanks again, and for you all who have tuned in, thank you. Be sure again, click like, subscribe, notification bell, including if you are listening, if you are. Uh, on YouTube, you can just click down to the details, get a little more information about myself and how to contact me. We are having some information uh, flashed up again for Kevin, if you need to contact Kevin, uh, which is, um, again, this is a, a, a one of the best out there when it comes to giving guidance and assistance with obtaining a mortgage to buy a home. So Kevin is my Thank guy. You. All right. So Thank thanks you. again for tuning in, everyone. Stay safe and stay tuned to New Jersey Living.